Um, cut out unnecessary introductory and transitional phrases. Okay, let's say you've got a five page word limit or five page limit uh, and you're at five pages and a quarter. The first thing you do is get rid of all the howevers, therefores, oh, if you use moreover, moreover, please, please, please get rid of that. Um, anything that's transitional, those introductory phrases like, I believe that, I think that, um, in this situation, comma, like anything where you're using three or four words, you're putting a comma after it, and then going on with the rest of the sentence, I guarantee you, if you cut all of those out, you will get within your page limit, and yet you will still have a perfectly solid memo. Those transitional phrases are fantastic for writing academic papers, but less so for really strong, concise memos. Um, when discussing actions, uh, use the word should or will, should or must. Okay, this shows that you're an expert, you're telling them like it is, this is the way things should go according to your expert analysis. Um, likewise, when discussing out outcomes, say it will be this way. I mean, the great irony of this is like, I'm sorry, for all the behavioral economics out there, like we have all these theories, truth is 90% of the time we don't actually know what people will do. You know, things are likely to happen. That's the reality. But if you want to show authority, <coughs> you use this word just will. It will happen this way. Um, advanced style. Okay, you've got to consider using concrete words and phrases. Ladening in the detail as opposed to having lots of separate sentences that are detailed. Um, let me give you an example. A student was writing a memo about food waste and about the enormous amount of food that's being thrown out at grocery stores. And it took three or four paragraphs, or three or four sentences, before she finally got to the point that really what she's talking about are meats, dairies, um, fruits and vegetables, which, as a group, they fall under the category of perishables. If she used the word perishables, she actually could have saved herself a couple of sentences of explanation because by using that kind, that exact let word, she could cover a great deal of stuff. All right, so we call these ladders of abstraction going up and down. You know, you're either getting more general or you're getting more specific. You need to find the right word along that ladder of abstraction. Um, so, you know, oh, and verbs too. Like, this would be one case where it might be worthwhile to use two or three more words if it gives a great deal more information, right? So instead of just saying somebody works someplace, saying that they conduct analytical research or manage operations or build schoolhouses, this gives me a great deal more information about who they are and what they do. Likewise, just saying that, you know, this is a study about asthma versus the study conducted by the University of Washington's Dr. Anna Stevens surveyed 200 adult asthma patients over one year. Giving me that level of detail helps me decide as a reader that this is a fairly significant, when I'm talking about like showing me that something is significant, not telling me that it's significant, this shows me that this is a sizable study and that it was done over a long enough period of time that it actually would give me some sort of results that have relevance as opposed to you know, if they did 10 people for one month, that really couldn't be extrapolated into a bigger idea. Um, and the last one's pretty much the same. Um, also, framing significance and implications. All right, this is the fun stuff. A lot of people talk about, oh, policy memos should be objective. I'm sorry. In my personal opinion, everything is subjective. There's always a sense of what do we need to achieve? What does your organization need to achieve? And who are you rooting for, okay? Likewise, there's a way of writing your sentences and presenting your evidence such that it, it sort of implies support or implies that you don't want them to support something. So let's look at these two examples, or the first two. Drug X has a 90% success rate versus drug X fails to work one out of 10 times. If I, this is the exact same statistic 
is just presented in two different ways. If I read it the first way, I'm much more likely to be excited about it and support it. If I read it the second way, even if it's like it fails one out of 10 times, okay, one out of 10 times isn't that bad. The fact that you're using that word fails so early on, you're sort of priming me to be at least a little bit skeptical about it, to sort of do a double take, okay? Um, the next one, one third of the farmers will see their profits double as a result versus more than 60% of the farmers will incur debt as a result. So if you gave me just that first sentence, I could get really excited about whatever it is that you're proposing. And I might not think to ask about what happens to the other two thirds of the people. Whereas, so you're like leaving out some detail that may actually have a pretty big impact. And that's like up to you and your own moral turpitude whether or not you leave that in or leave that out, okay? But the second sentence, presenting that, makes me say, well, uh, this is not something that I want to support. Like, we're going to be severely damaging people's lives because of the way you framed it, how you talked about it failing, how about the fact that you're sort of looking at, you're focusing on who's losing in this, and I'm gonna be worried about that. Um, yeah, the third one goes again to like, who is it that you're writing this for? So the new wage policy will save employers more than 150,000 per year. So if I'm working for, or I represent some sort of like labor or business owners association, like I'd be like, hey, this is great. My group is gonna win. They're gonna save lots of money, blah, blah, blah. But if I'm representing a union, and you give me this next detail, the new wage policy will cost employees at least 50 cents per hour worked, adding up to $20 or more in lost wages each weekly paycheck, then I'm gonna have a pause. So it may be the same information, the same core data, but how you frame it and how you present it speaks a lot to what your agenda is and who you think should be winning and who you should be losing and what you want them to support or not support, okay? So, and this last one, this is actually from a flyer I got last year. Uh, candidate Z does not participate in backroom deals. I mean, the funny thing is, is like, in my local elections, like nobody talked about backroom deals, but the fact that they sent this out, it's almost like they're saying, well, we don't. We're not saying anybody else does, but you know, we don't. But at the same time, they're actually kind of implying that maybe the other candidate does deal in backroom deals. It's kind of like throwing out a false accusation without actually making an accusation, right? So these are things to think about and consider about how you shape your data and how you present your argument in order to support it or to torpedo it. Um, and then this format, which uh, here's, here's basic trivia for you. When email was invented, it was designed to look just like a memo, all right? We still have the to, the from, the date, the subject, right? Except the date is put in for us automatically, right? Um, email was supposed to be faster memos. It was not supposed to be what you write to your mom on, okay? And that's part of the reason why so much of what we do online now is actually block quotes like this, or block paragraphs like this, because it's all based off of this format, okay? Um, what you can't see in this reproduction are the bold headlines, but you see that they're fairly short paragraphs, that there's a space in between them, nothing is indented. What you're also not seeing here are bullet points or anything like that, but that's totally allowable. Um, in the sample sets that you guys got, you will be able to see um, some more variety in terms of what memos can and should look like. And with that, um, yeah, that's if you want extra help. I don't think you need it. Um, you are, although, in there is my email address. If you guys are stuck, you could reach out to me. Um, and I do do office hours on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, so I am willing to give at least a little bit of advice. I will give it to you on structure and format and clarity. I will not help you with your content. 
Um, that should be up to you, and I feel like me going into content with you would be um, giving you guys, like, you know, going against the rules. Like, it'd just be unfair. Um, but I am available for help. Feel free to reach out. I will be working and answering emails during the spring break as well. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Any questions? Well, at that, I'm sure the pizza is still getting cold, so you, know, you might want to get it first. All right, thank you very much.